And welcome again to our favorite night of the week, Thursday evening and Wagner webcast live. I'm your host, Brian Bushlack. Lorena and Leonard are joining us as well. Diane Lander will join us here in just a bit. And also Mark Bunzel, our captain, is on his way north, and we will connect with him by phone. Mark, are you with us? Well, we've been... Yeah, we're having trouble with Mark. He's in uh, Desolation Sound, and we had him earlier. Mark, are you there? Okay, we'll come back to Mark in just a bit. But uh, Leonard and Lorena, I know you've got some uh, backups for us here from Mark's trip to walk us through and kind of give us an update of the flotilla on its way up to Alaska. Yes, we do. Exactly. We have several photos that Mark sent in that we'll share. And uh, I'm sure he would tell you that it's a great group, different uh, variety of uh, different sizes mm -hmm. of boats, everything from 26 mm -hmm. foot to 70 plus foot. And uh, they stopped at Silva Bay. They were going mm -hmm. to spend the night there. Just a minute. <laughs> and Get the pictures up here in a moment. Yeah, hold on a second. I lost. Oh, here it is up on me. <laughs> I have a screen sharing issue going on here. Uh, there it is. Okay. Yeah. Sorry about that. We had uh, jumped up to a different screen on me here. Technology problems all over the place here. So they were, uh, yeah, stopped at Silva Bay. They were going to do a, a, a class on cheese making. And checking the weather, they thought they better get across the Strait of Georgia. So they headed out about noon and made their way to Pender Harbor. And we'll go through some uh, pictures here. The Malaspina Strait, you can see it's a little choppy there. This happened to be the day afterwards. So they were in Pender. And then after Pender, they were, uh, after they stayed the night in Pender, they headed up. And that picture, previous picture, was uh, what about 15 knots right off the bow. Uh, northwesterly winds as they were headed up Mal Malaspina Street. This is what happens to be, uh, it's, it's titled the fun of the mix of the boats here. And there's, on the flotilla, there's a total of nine boats. And uh, out of those nine boats is everything from over a 70 footer uh, to this uh, 26 foot sea dory. Uh, there's power, there's sail, there's just a variety of different people. This happens to be one of the dinner, the group dinner meetings. I believe this one was in Ganges at one of the pubs in there. Moby's pub. Okay. And uh, this one was a potluck dinner when they arrived in uh, Pender, uh, Pender Harbor at- um, John Henry. John Henry. Henry. Thank you. Yep. And uh, some more good look, great look, it looked like, wow, I'm hungry now. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was again, the potluck dinner. And this one happens to be, this is an interesting one. Mark reported that on one of the boats, one of the boats has installed a commercial popcorn popper on their on the flybridge, and so uh, this is a perfect adjunct to uh, the sundowner drinks and the op the cold beers that you're going to have with uh, professionally pop popcorn there, which happens to be I I'm sure that's got to be a very unique thing. As a matter of fact, our boat that uh, we might be adding that to our boat. <laughs> this is a great idea. <laughs> and uh, this one is as a as Fun. after they were securely moored after a long day uh, crossing the Strait of Georgia and up into Pender Harbor. And uh, they're tied up for the night there. That's it on that one. See if I can find my transition to the next. Uh, let's stop that. Yeah, quite a mix of boats. Yes. Yeah. Hey, Mark, are you with us now? I am back, I hope. Uh, and yes, we did have quite a mix of boats, containing seven to eight knots, and just have had beautiful weather except for yesterday. We took it off due to the high wind. What's the name of your lead boat? We have a question from uh, Ronnie in our uh, audience. It is called Siamar, spelled C-I-A-M-A-R, and people can look it up on traffic. See our AIS signal as we go up. And we're in pre Tomorrow we'll be transiting up through Dent Rapids and the, the three rapids uh, up to the Channel Lodge. Well, it sounds like a great trip so far, and it looks like the food's been good as well, huh? 
food's been excellent. These just amazing. The different things that people can share, and uh, uh, the group is just getting to know each other better and better. And we're having a we're having a ball. Fantastic. It sounds like you have uh, some special clearance into Canada too. Is that right? Well, no. I got the other day on on uh, in bringing the group into Canada. I went in first. And I called in all my information, and I was told they occasionally do this, but uh, I uh, basically was cleared over the phone, and they gave me a clearance number, and I did not have to go up to the dock. Uh, the rest of the group did have to go to the dock, and they were kind of ticked that uh, I got through and and uh, was able to clear, and, and they had to go through uh, a few more steps with uh, the customs agents and inspecting their boats so when you call in is it uh this is captain mark bunzel from the wagner guide calling in is that how you announce yourself or is that how you were able to get through no <laughs> definitely not uh i think i think people who do that they uh they probably make them go uh, twice as long or they inspect their boat even deeper no i just uh Try to do it as professional as possible with the information they're looking for of having it ready to read back to them. Uh, I was talking to a woman agent in Winnipeg, and of course she doesn't know uh, where Van Isle Marina is and or the, any body of water. And so we just stepped through it. I lost the connection four times, uh, but called back and reconnected, and we were able to get get it through. Hey, Mark, uh, Bob Stump is wondering if you called in on Canadian Nexus. Negative. I did not call in on Canadian Nexus. I did use the Arrive Can app, and that was critical. They wanted that number for each of the people on the and we gave them that number, and they used that as Okay, we lost you there for a second. Are you back with us now, Mark? I can hear you. Hi, Brian. Great. Talk about the weather on the way up. Uh, it looked like you had some blue skies, but it looks uh, maybe a little windy. We have blue skies and now in Haven. But we actually we made a decision in Silva Bay that we're going to skip heading in Silva Bay and cross the Strait of Georgia before the windstorm came in. And our crossing, flat, calm, it was absolutely beautiful. But uh, we missed the hospitality at uh, Pages Marina Res uh, in Silver Bay. Well, it sounds like it's been a great trip so far and a safe trip, which is the most important. Mark, stay with us now as we uh, continue through this show. It's going to be a great one with Diane Lander coming up here in just a few minutes to talk about uh, the classic yachts and Bell Harbor. First, though, uh, Lorena sounds like King Five giving some love to Anacortes, huh? Tell us about that. They are. They're spotlighting Anacortes. And uh, if you want to tune in tomorrow, May 20 at 7.30 p.m., King Five Evening Magazine, they will be featuring Anacortes kayak tours, some seafood cafes in Anacortes, and George Harris president of NMTA will also be on the show. He's going to talk about shrimping and fishing in the islands nearby. And of course, the Anacortes boat show is going on right now. And we happened to see George today down at the show and took a few pictures of the show we can share with you here. Oh, well, that's great. And of course, there's the, uh, if you're there, drop into the Wagoner uh, booth in there. Terrific, terrific. Everybody was having fun. Uh, Anthony's next door was busy. Uh, people were busy at the booth. Lots of questions. Lots of people walking around and down on the dock. People were touring the boats, big and small. That's great. That uh, looks like fun and great to see everybody back out again. It's been, it's been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. Great. What's the latest on uh, BC News, and uh, do you have any marina updates for us? We do. Uh, the latest news, we've all been waiting to hear, 
from BC Customs, compliments of Victoria International Marina. They gave us the heads up that CBSA just shared today that uh, Bedwell Harbor, the custom stock at Bedwell Harbor and Poets Cove will open and it's opening tomorrow. We don't have a time, but uh, it will be open starting tomorrow, May 20. So that's great news. And, that, and that's Bedwell Harbor. And then uh, in addition to that, there are some, uh, some of the other uh, uh, reporting stations that were closed during COVID time that are going to be open. We don't have a list of those, so we recommend that you go on to the, if you just do a Google search on CBSA small craft reporting sites, uh, you'll get to a website and the website shows all the reporting sites for all of Canada and you get to sort that by, uh, by province. And so obviously sort it uh, by BC and you get a full list of all of the ones that are open. We're, expect, we're hoping that that list will be updated on, the, on their website uh, tomorrow, but there's a, I'm guessing that it may take them a day or two to get that updated. Okay. And we have the news from Victoria. Uh, the Royal BC Museum is a favorite in Victoria to visit. You might want to visit that before September this year because they're closing. They are building a new state-of-the-art museum and seismically safe building, and it won't open until 2030. So stop by while you can. Uh, apparently, the artifact storage is below sea level, and the building is not earthquake safe. So they're redoing that. It'll open 2030, and the new museum will cover the history of, of all the different people that contributed to BC's rich heritage, so we can look forward to that. There is some political opposition to spending that much money, $789 million to, to uh, build this new museum, but it looks like it will go forward. Can I, I wanted to back up just a second. There was something on chat about Nexus, and, uh, and uh, there was a question about whether Mark can clear through Nexus, and then one of our uh, viewers volunteered that at uh, Van Isle they were told there's no customs, there's no nexus clearance. Uh, it's really the expedited clearance, and uh, that indeed is not activated yet. That's something that was closed up during COVID time. So that the expedited process is where you phone ahead and uh, through the 1-800 number for nexus, uh, Canadian nexus, and you give them an ETA at a specific arrival point. And then uh, you're supposed to arrive before that ETA. And then if no customs person arrives and inspects your boat before that ETA time, you're free to go with a number. And that whole process has not been uh, available during COVID time, and it remains unavailable at this time. We have no date, no expectation that it's going to change. Our guess is that it, it won't change until all of the COVID uh, restrictions and things are cleared up uh, on the border customs side of it. There's just too many things that that the board or CBSA people are supposed to check when you come in. So we don't think that they're gonna open that up soon. Maria? Yeah, we have some more news from Victoria. Uh, if you're there May 21 and 22, you might wanna join the Victoria Highland Games and uh, Celtic Festival. It sounds like great fun. Uh, they're back, it's their 159th one. And of course, they weren't able to do it these last two years because of COVID, but the event includes a parade, band competition, Scottish, Irish dancing competition, the uh, caber toss with the, those are the big long heavy poles that you toss, they're nine, they weigh 90 to 150 pounds. They also have a contest with the hammer throw, so all sorts of games. And then they have haggis. Uh, hurling. Haggis, of course, is the uh, savory pudding, meat pudding made from uh, sheep, different sheep parts. Yeah, and parts, apparently, yeah. apparently you can eat it and hurl it. <laughs> so, Not me. <laughs> it sounds fun. <laughs> they have a tug of war, uh, historic military demonstrations, and Scottish uh, Celtic food, of course. And this takes place at Topaz Park in Victoria. So check it out. Sounds like fun. And then news from Haida Gwaii. Uh, of course, Haida Gwaii used to be called Queen Charlotte Island, and that was renamed in 2009. And it looks like they're renaming the town called Queen Charlotte. And uh, they voted the Queen Charlotte Community Hall unanim unanimously 
to uh, restore the ancestral Ida name. So the new name for Charlotte, Queen Charlotte is now Da Jean Deeds. Da Jean Deeds is the native name, the Haida name for the town of Queen Charlotte. So it's kind of interesting. We'll probably see some name changes on signs and brochures and so forth taking place here soon. And uh, Falls Creek, if you're going to Vancouver, BC, uh, ben the city of Vancouver has had a pilot program for free pump out service, mobile pump out service. And they did renew the contract with a company called Kukum Yacht Services. So uh, if you're in Falls Creek, you can get a free pump out. Just uh, dial the number or actually text the number, let them know where you're anchored and they'll come to your boat, the name of your boat, or if you're at a marina, give the name of the marina and your slip number and they'll put you on the schedule for free pump out. And we'll put the phone number in the chat there. Again, uh, that's in Falks Creek, Vancouver. Yeah. And a couple of marina updates. Um, Lizzie Cove, which is a family run, uh, actually it's their home and they have a nice long dock. They invite guests to tie up there. We talk to them and they are remaining closed in 2022. They're concerned about COVID. And they tell us that nearby Shearwater and Bella Bella, which is close to them, they are having a number of COVID uh, cases that are uh, reported there. So if you're traveling in that area and you're stopping at Shearwater or Bella Bella, uh, just be aware, wear your mask, uh, be considerate of this remote location. I'm sure they'd appreciate that. And the pub there is open, but they ask for proof of vaccination and please wear your mask. So they are open, but um, just be cautious and practice mask wearing and distance distancing. And Leonard has something. Oh, this was uh, this came in from local Novus to Mariners up in uh, southeast Alaska. They wanted to announce that uh, on the this is in near Jean, uh, Juneau, and on the Gastonal Channel and north of Gastonal Channel is the Mendenhall Bar Channel, and this is a channel that goes from Juneau up to Auk Bay. And uh, it's a, a it's charted. It, uh, they regularly set the buoys in there each year, and this local Novus to Mariners to let people know that they, the Coast Guard has set the buoys, the uh, lateral buoys in there, the red and green buoys are marked. Now they, they reset them every year because this whole thing silts up and uh, it teases, it entices people into thinking that they might go up there. But this is a, a very, about a uh, eight mile long stretch. The whole thing dries at a plus 14 foot tide. So you need at least, at least a plus 17 foot tide with any kind of a draft vessel. It's not navigable. Well, by most folks, it's going to take a, a dinghy or something small. So I thought that was interesting that their the buoys are set. You're ready to go. A, a teaser is there. We had a, I don't think I had that picture up right now, but we actually have a picture of somebody that tried that in a trawler style and they're sitting there you know, on the mud flats uh, waiting for the tide to free them again. So, yes, yeah, so the shoals are shifting around and that's why they're moving the buoys and and taking care of that. So it might be fun with a dinghy, but uh, not advised for, for right. a large boat. Yeah. And then I uh, want to do one other, uh, let me see if I can share a screen here. Uh, we talked about the updates table several times and, uh, and this is on wagonerguide.com forward slash updates. And this is where you'll find all of the information that we're talking about here, plus any uh, other things. And just wanted to run down that a little bit there. If you go to wagonerguide.com and uh, go to the, there's a picture of a closed dock there on one of the, one of the panels, click on that and you'll get to this screen. Uh, you enter here, enter on a page that looks like this, closed dock on the main, that's on the main page, you'll see closed dock and you'll come here. And this table is uh, one that at first might look look like it's hard to navigate. It's organized by these area tabs, Washington waters, British Columbia waters, Northern British Columbia, and West Coast Vancouver Island, and then of course, Southeast Alaska. And I just wanted to demonstrate this. this, this you can scroll through here. The status is, the, uh, uh, is what is the key to this. We only have, there's only four status uh, indicators that you have here. 
There's open, which is obvious. Limited means it's open, but there's something that's not fully functional there. And then updates indicates that there's something that has changed since the most recent edition of the Wagoner Guide. And uh, then there's, of course, closed. Uh, there's one that's closed. You can scroll through this, but I also wanted to show that you can change uh, how this is grouped. And so if you come down here and you say, uh, if you take away the group by, and then it'll, it'll be one complete list. And then if you just wanted to see the marinas that are updated, for instance, then sort on this status list and sort it from the top, from uh, top to bottom. And here are all the one, all of the marinas that are closed the, and other facilities. So you go through the uh, open and then the limited, and then you can see all of the ones that have been updated. Uh, so something that's changed since the most recent version of the Wagner Guide. And if I want to find a particular marina? Uh, if you wanted to find a particular marina, come over here and there's a little spyglass. And uh, this is a search argument and you can type in any anything you want. Uh, let's put uh, snug, uh, snug. And so it selects the, it goes to the item that you want out of that. So just to help you find and, and use this, this is a very valuable piece and it's a very active part of our of our website to say the least, especially in these COVID times. And uh, right here, you, you get the uh, the date that we last changed that. So uh, if there's uh, if you want to check and see is this the most recent information, uh, check over here on the date. But we're constantly calling on things, and we're also entering things in here from the re, uh, from our viewers and other people that email us with information that they discovered. That's great, great resource. I mean, the updates you give us here every Thursday. I, I look forward to that. But I mean, in between, I know you're doing this practically seven days a week, right? Yes, we, exactly. As Mark mentioned last week, we, we make phone calls and then all of you folks out there voting, uh, send us emails and that's much appreciated. Yeah, definitely very interactive. Well, I'm glad you touched on that. That's what I was going to ask about. And uh, with that, it's time, uh, Marina, to welcome this week's guest. It is. We have Diane with us, Diane Lander. She is the staff commodore of the Classic Yacht Association, and that includes five fleets in, in the U.S. and Canada. She has chaired the Bell Harbor Rendezvous event now for seven years. She's a member of the Seattle Yacht Club and served as chair of the 2022 winning Wilson Seamanship Team on opening day. And that event consisted of teams of boats competing in a number of challenging maneuvers. And they were all decked out in their 1920s boating costumes. And I think she may have some photos about that. Diane has been a classic boat owner herself for over 30 years and is a former owner of the MV Olympus, a 1928, 97-foot fantail motor yacht that was built in New York for the president of the New York Stock Exchange. So that's interesting. She now owns and operates the Marion II. It's a 1928, 42-foot Lake Union Dreamboat. And so we're looking forward to learning more about the Classic Yacht Association and the upcoming rendezvous. And so welcome, Diane. Thank you um, very much, um, Lorena and Leonard and Brian. It's really great to be here tonight. And I'm here mostly to talk about our um, 25th anniversary Bell Harbor Rendezvous event, which will be held June 18th and 19th at the um, Bell Harbor at, at the Bell Harbor Marina at Pier 66. And um, our, our boat show, it's our 25th year, as I mentioned, and we will have up to 50 beautiful classic wooden power boats on display at the marina, free admission to the public. The show hours are from 10 to four each day on Saturday and Sunday. And many of the boats are um, open to the public for tours. So before I go to a few pictures, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the Classic Yacht Association. It is an organization that was formed in 1970 um, with a dedication um, to promote and encourage the preservation, restoration, and maintenance of fine old power-driven pleasure craft. 
Now we have over 300 members in the United States and Canada, and um, as far away as Greece and Australia. And so there are people all over the planet who are, um, as me, afflicted with the wooden boat disease. And so it's a really, really wonderful organization. The Bell Harbor Rendezvous was started um, in 1997, the first year that they built the new Bell Harbor Marina. And our organization was invited to bring a bunch of power boats down, a bunch of classic boats and display them. We are now a 501c3. And so we are a nonprofit organization. And so our goal is to really educate the public about, um, about classic boats and classic boat ownership. And it's really um, not nearly as scary as people think. So um, we, we really, really enjoy um, educating people about our boats and showing people our boats. Every year, um, our event is promoted by this beautiful poster. Um, this year's poster is particularly Art Deco. It is designed by one of our members who's a world-renowned artist named David Hutchhausen. He does um, a lot of just beautiful glass art, but um, he, we're also lucky enough to have him design these beautiful posters. We do have these posters for sale on our website um, going back 25 years. And um, we, we donate sets of them to various nonprofit um, auctions around town. So they're really beautiful collectible posters. Hey, Diane, can you click double click on that so it goes full screen? Oh, yeah. Let's see. Like that? Is that good? Is that too big? Did it work? On my end, I'm just, I'm seeing your whole screen there. And I'm, I can't zoom in on the, uh, the poster. Maybe double click on the poster. Is that better? No? No, not yet. Uh, I don't know. Because hmm. on my screen, it's showing the whole thing. It's giant. No? Huh. Yeah, okay, we're... let's go to the next picture and see what happens, okay? Okay. Uh-oh. <laughs> now i hope i didn't screw you up there <laughs> oh i think it's okay okay so anyway here's our um here's our logo for this year's um event yeah, so think, can hey, you Diane, see that okay try, uh, try and um, stop share screen and then go back into share screen and select a different uh different window okay wait oh, god are you kidding Okay, let's see. Technical difficulties, you guys. Up on the top there, you should, just a second, we can now. Because now these pictures are giant on my screen and I don't even see the Zoom thing anymore. Okay, wait, okay. Now what? Yeah, select the and then Try sharing again? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Try to select the uh, full screen. It's showing the file folder. Yeah. Okay. Share screen. Should I do share screen again? Yeah. Okay. Now. Okay, now, all right. Is that better? Oh no, that's worse. Maybe double click on that uh, poster again. Okay. How about now? No, try try a double click. Looked like maybe it was just one. Is that good? No. I don't know. I'm on a Microsoft Surface, but it's giant on my screen. Now I can't get out of this. Uh oh. Uh oh. Now I don't know what to do, you guys. Uh, Jim Hammer and Mike Schmidt uh, both say to hit the escape key, back out of it, and then share the other screen. The other screen? 
Yeah, yeah, we're seeing your file folder open, not the actual, you're seeing the big document that's opened. We're seeing your file folder. Okay, so should I close all that now? If you escape out of it again, and then just you know come back into it on share screen, just select the other uh, option rather than seeing your file folder. So we'll see your full screen. <laughs> I think we're going beyond my level of expertise here. I'll minimize the file folder. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. Thanks. Okay, minimize. Oh, minimize. Okay. Here. Oh, up here. Okay, I did that. Minimize. All right, try, try share screen again. Okay, boy, isn't this fun? The audience is impressed. <laughs> Well, we want to be able to see those beautiful pictures. They are amazing. So, okay, now I did it. Now what? Try your share screen again. Maybe I should hit the button that says leave. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> Try share screen again. Okay, share screen. Okay, I did share screen. Oh, wait, share. Okay, but now there's my whole file folder again. Mm. Maybe try double clicking on it now. There we go. Yeah. Is it good? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's it. Okay, good. So we're seeing your uh, your boat your your picture, your poster. Okay, so let's go to the next picture. Okay, so there's the logo for our 25th anniversary event. And here's a picture taken when um at a prior Bell Harbor event when there was this um, phenomena which was called the sun. And um, so it's just beautiful when we fill Bell Harbor Marina with wooden classic boats. And um, in, in these recent years, the contrast between our beautiful classic boats and the 13 story cruise ship, which is sometimes right down there at Pier 66. It's just quite a sight. And um, it's really, really interesting and fun, fun, fun to be down there. Boats are beautiful. Yeah, yeah so for in our, in our 25th anniversary year, we're celebrating what we're calling heritage boats. And so this is a picture of the 1926 Blanchard boat called Fawn, F-A-U-N. And the heritage boats that we're celebrating are boats that have been owned by one family for 25 years or more. So um, Michael Passage and Laura Chaflet, in 1997, they worked downtown and they wanted to kill a few hours downtown. And so they came down to the first Bell Harbor Rendezvous boat show, the very first one we had, and they bought their boat Fawn, which was for sale there. And they've been the proud caretakers of Fawn ever since for the past 25 years. Wow. This boat is called Marini. It's owned by Jim and Margie Payton. It's a Chris Craft, and they've owned it for over 30 years. But Jim and Margie were our very active Classic Yacht Association members who, who were the founders of our Bell Harbor event. They actually started it. And so their boat will be featured as a heritage boat this year. This is a picture of my boat, the Marion II, a 1928 42 foot Lake Union dream boat um, built at Lake Union Dry Dock Company in Seattle. And this is a beautiful picture, again, um, showing sun, which we haven't seen much, but this boat was taken by a drone um, flying right above my boat. And it's just a great, great picture. And here's another picture of my boat on opening day of boating a few years back. Beautiful. This boat is really interesting. It's called Mirrorless. It is a 1956 Ed Monk design. The guy on top of it, Russ, Russell Kastner up on the flybridge was a young boy of about um, 10 years old in 1956 when his father built this boat. And this boat has been in the, the family ever since 1956. 
and it's been maintained, but it's never been, um, it hasn't needed to have ever been restored or anything, but owned by one family, continuous ownership ever since 1956. So um, that boat will also be on display down at Bell Harbor, June 18th and 19th. Um, this is a picture of my previous boat, Olympus, one time on opening day of boating. Olympus was sold in 2017 and it did go back to the East Coast. And this is just another picture of Olympus just for interest. So um, you can expect to see, like I mentioned, probably uh, at least 45 classic boats um, down at Bell Harbor, June 18th and 19th. And we really invite everybody to come down there. We have a number of um, event sponsors who help us um, pay for the moorage down at um, Bell Harbor Marina so that all of the people who are involved in the boat show, we buy out the marina for the weekend. And so our members get free moorage on Friday and Saturday night. And we're very thankful to our sponsors. I have um, a list of about 10 of them that I'd love to read, but you'd probably kill me. So I'll just keep going. But anyway, um, we're, we're very, very, very grateful to our sponsors for, um, for their sponsorship. And it's really, really fun to come down and see the classic boats and the enthusiasm of all of our um, caretaking members who we all just love our boats. We all love to tell their history. We love to tell their stories. And um, it's really, really, really fun. And so it's, a, it, and it's also a really fun thing to do on Father's Day because it's Father's Day weekend every year for 25 years. So a lot of people um, bring their fathers down to see the, the classic boats because the classic boats are old and people's fathers are old. <laughs> and it's, it's just a, a really, really great event. And this year I've organized a cruise um, which will be leaving the Monday after our Bell Harbor event. And we have about 12 classic boats signed up and we're gonna cruise down to the end of Hood Canal down to Alderbrook. And so we're going to be quite a sight, all those classic boats cruising down the Hood Canal. And so it's going to be, um, it's going to be really, really fun. So I'm certainly looking forward to that also. So I hope everybody comes down and, and checks out our, our wooden boats and gets a little bit of education about wooden boats because they're really not as scary as everybody thinks. <laughs> not at all so uh diane i know that uh leonard had a question for you before we went on the air tonight about <laughs> var about varnish what was that question leonard <laughs> i was thinking of something because we on our boat we have a small amount of right work uh and um that's my varnish um, project uh so i was asking about uh, how much how much varnish you have on that diane and i was amazed with your answer so if you would please repeat that well um leonard it goes back to when i owned the olympus the 97 foot boat which you can see from the pictures had a tremendous amount of bite of bright work so i got used to buying varnish in five gallon containers oh. and so you have to be very careful about keeping the cans closed and straining it and all that. But yeah, there's a lot, lot of bright work on these boats. And when, um, when I owned the Olympus, my late husband and I built a custom boathouse for her. And the boathouse is on the south dock at Lake Union Dry Dock Company. You know, Lake Union Dry Dock Company has been in business since, um, well, it celebrated its centennial in um, 2019. So it's been in business since 1919 um, on the shores of Lake Union and not a lot has changed there. I mean, it's, it's a very old um, and a very functional facility. And so my Lake Union dreamboat still lives in that boathouse and keeping the boat in the boathouse is what really helps to protect the bright work. But the thing that's great about the Classic Yacht Association is even though every one of these boats is like driving around in a varnished grand piano on the water, um, we all use our boats. 
and they're all very beautiful and very functional, but we use them. We love to cruise with them. And they're very seaworthy and very functional boats. And it's really great to take out a classic boat. Well, it's, uh, it's, they're beautiful, that's for sure. But I, I have to tell you, I can't even imagine how long it takes to put five <laughs> gallons of varnish onto, onto the apply it somewhere. I don't even, I don't think I want to know at this point. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm fortunate enough to have um, a varnish guy who worked for me on um, full time maintaining the Olympus. And let's just say for the Marion two, every year it's the month of April. It's a month. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. hey, Dan, a question from uh, Birdie in our chat. Why did you sell the Olympus? Well, I sold the Olympus because um, I got tired of paying for it. The maintenance was extremely expensive. And I chartered it for many years. I did luxury charters on it for many years. But um, my financial planner's goal of making the Olympus a revenue neutral operation was not to be. <laughs> I bet. And I also um, could not obtain insurance on the Olympus unless it was operated by a Coast Guard licensed captain. And so that meant that even if I would have learned how to operate the Olympus myself, I couldn't have done it. So I wanted something smaller that I could um, operate myself. So I bought the Marion II um, in January, 2014. And it was only after I bought it that I figured out that I really didn't know how to drive a boat. I knew a lot about um, pairing food and wine and luxury charters on boats, but I did not know how to operate a boat um, myself. And my husband passed away, but he didn't know how to drive boats either. We always had a captain. So I um, started in 2014 learning how to operate a boat. I took every class that I could get my hands on. And um, I had some great instructors, former captains of mine. And I've gone to seminars taught by Linda Lewis and Margaret Pomerant. And I've learned navigation. And I've practiced, practiced, practiced single screw docking in the wind. And so it's just a big educational process. And I feel pretty confident now. The farthest that I've taken Marion to is where Mark is tonight, Desolation Sound. But wow. I've never taken her to Alaska, but she has been to Alaska before I owned her. Wow. That's yeah. So it's really fun. And I'm very active in a lot of the women's boating groups around town. And, um, you know, women can operate boats. And I've, I can, I can do some rudimentary um, maintenance of the engine. I only have one engine. So if it conks out, I'm dead, you know? So I have to maintain it well. It's a, a Zuzu diesel four cylinder. And I've learned an awfully lot since I bought the Marion too. And it's just great. I just love it. So That's much great. Fun. So we appreciate you sharing all that. Uh, I, I know so many of us love these wooden boats of all sizes and, uh, this is a really cool event. The setting down there is incredible, and it's going to be great to have everybody back together on Father's Day weekend, isn't it? It sure is, and it's it's just our pleasure to welcome people to the docks, and you know, in many cases aboard our boats, people don't have the opportunity to go aboard these boats, and you know, and to see them, and most of them have modern systems and modern electronics. I mean, you've got to replace the engine and make sure it runs, and you've got to replace the electricity. I mean, you, you've got to rewire these boats. And, um, you know, the objective is always to make sure it floats, make sure it doesn't burn up and make sure it um, moves <laughs> in that order. Yeah, those are pretty important things. Well, Diane, we, uh, we appreciate you joining us and all your contributions and uh, everything you do for this. It's, uh, it, it really is special. So thanks for joining us. Thank you. I'm so um, happy to have been invited to join you. And I'm also now I work part-time for NIBA, the Northwest Yacht Brokers Association. And I'm helping with um, producing the Boats Afloat shows. Oh, wow. The next one is September 15th to 18th at beautiful Lake Union Piers, formerly known as Chandler's Cove. So you can invite me back um, in the summer to tell about the Boats Afloat show. <laughs> 
We look forward to it. That's great. Well, appreciate you uh, telling us about that and uh, for joining us tonight. And uh, boy, it's hard to believe Memorial Day weekend coming up a little over a week away. Our next uh, program, one week from tonight, Eric Peterson will join us. Uh, director of the Tula Foundation, oversees the Hakai Institute in uh, BC, which conducts marine science research. So that's pretty interesting. Uh, the Tula Foundation has been appointed by the United Nations as the Regional Collaborative Center for uh, the Pacific Ocean Science. So uh, pretty cool uh, guest coming up with us next week. That's one week from tonight. In the meantime, wherever you may be, safe boating. And we'll talk to you again next Thursday here on Wagner Webcast Live. Thanks, everyone, and good, good night. night.